Is everyone ready? Just give me a thumbs up. All good. Thank, great, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to the panel discussion on the FinTech industry organized by the Bosnia and Herzegovina Futures Foundation. I am Emin Haidarevic, coordinator of the panel discussions at the BA Futures Foundation, and I will be the moderator for the next 90 minutes. Thanks to each and every one of you for joining us and setting aside 90 minutes of your time to hear from our uh, renowned experts about FinTech, which is an especially hot topic nowadays. In the next hour and a half, we will have the opportunity to hear the thoughts, ideas, and advice of the well-known experts in this field, whom I would like to thank once again for participating here and uh, joining us tonight. Now I'll proceed to introduce each of our tonight's panelists. Uh, the first one is Mr. Kenan Karcic. Kenan graduated from the Faculty of Economics in Sarajevo and completed his uh, master's degree in strategic IT management. Kenan spent nine years as one of the key people at Oracle. Uh, he was a member of the Board of Governors of the American Chamber of Commerce in Bosnia and Herzegovina for two years. Then he became the president of the board and served for two more years. Uh, Kenan is now serving as a head of uh, Digital Banking Center at Raiffeisen Bank. Kenan, thank you very much for joining us tonight. We are very much glad that you're here. Uh, thank you, Emin. Good evening to you. Uh, good evening to colleague uh, panelists. And uh, of course, good evening to the audience out there who join us online. It's uh, not uh, just to say it, uh, but this is honest. It's a real pleasure to share this evening with you and to share the thoughts about this very important topic. But uh, before we switch to the topic, I have to say that I admire to all of you guys uh, within your organization uh, for what you are doing and uh, you are true inspiration, I think, uh, to all of us here and in the country and across the world. So great job by the team, especially the men who started all. I would like to congratulate uh, uh, Eddie for helping our youth in the country. Thank you very much, Kenan. I'm sure Eddie will see this. Uh, the next panelist is Orhan, Mr. Orhan Gazibegovic. Orhan spent uh, total of 18 plus years of diverse work and experience in finance, IT, marketing, uh, leading and coaching teams of divergent backgrounds and affinities. Uh, he has managed the successful digital banking projects and product developments over the last 10 years. Uh, Orhan is a lead contributor to vital digital transformation uh, initiatives on the country level of Bosnia and Herzegovina. And he is currently focused on innovative payment methods and utilization of digital payment in Bosnia and Herzegovina. And he is joining us from the company Mondri Payments. Orhan, thank you very much for joining us tonight. Thank you, Emin, and uh, hello to everyone, especially my uh, colleagues, experts from the field, and also to uh, all of our audience listening and joining me tonight to uh, hear the, this very important discussion we are having. Because as we all know, FinTech is uh, the future of payments. Uh, so uh, everything we are saying tonight will probably be very uh, important and very useful to, to our audiences. Okay. Thank you, Orhan. Uh, our third panelist tonight is Mr. Jenan Shlivo. Uh, Jenan graduated as an information technology engineer at the Faculty of Information Technology in Mostar. Uh, he is the first employee after the Zachina brothers in the company Ministry of Programming, and he is there now serving as a lead engineer. Uh, Jenan is one of the first members and now the chief technology officer of Naga. Uh, and Naga is the most successful startup launched with the support of Ministry of Programming. And it is publicly traded on the Frankfurt Stock Exchange and has a market capitalization of more than uh, 100 million euros. Jenan, thank you very much for joining us tonight. Yeah, you're welcome. Good evening to everyone. Uh, first and foremost, I have to say I didn't write into LinkedIn that... Uh, uh, of all, I, I wasn't a uh, participant of uh, like huge number of uh, these panel discussions or some events, but uh, the emails that you have sent regarding these, this panel were quite professional. I was quite impressed, like the emails, uh, they had all the details needed. So thumbs up for that. Keep up the good work on that side, because uh, I have experienced quite unorganized events and hopefully we'll manage to uh, have that same bar in terms of this panel discussion, share some ideas. And just a quick note, I no means uh, consider myself as an expert in the field for sure, 
but I do have some knowledge and I have been working uh, around the FinTech for the last six years. So I hope I will be able to share some of my experience here. Thank you very much, Jen, and I'm sure you will. Uh, our fourth panelist tonight is Mr. Daniel Baraj, who is joining us from California, which is very far away from where I am right now. Uh, Daniel has attended a wide range of educational institutions, including Munich School of Commerce and IT in Germany, Faculty of Mechanical Engineering in Sarajevo, so he's kind of our guy, and uh, Menlo College in California, plus two years long certification program at Stanford University. Daniel uh, held a senior advertising and finance position at Google for five years. Uh, for a year and a half, he was a senior manager of products and consumer risk at PayPal. For five years, he served as a global head of payments at eBay. He was a senior director of customer experience and operations at Blackboard, a software company worth $3 billion. And uh, he was a global head of products, billing and payments at Roku, a company worth $28 billion. Daniel is currently an advisor to Yama Pay and the nonprofit Universal Giving, which is a great nonprofit organization in San Francisco, helping, uh, among others, victims of uh, massive California wildfires and people who are affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. Daniel, thank you so very much for joining us from California tonight, or the morning. Very, very excited and thrilled to be with you guys. Thank you, Emin and Azra, for organizing this. I'd like to echo what Jenan had mentioned previously, which is organization was tipped up, very buttoned up. I'm also thrilled to meet the panelists and certainly this is in my life been a, a very interesting journey in FinTech space and then of course adjacent industries, but um, I am very much looking forward to this event and meeting people and staying in touch thereafter. Thank you. Thank you very much, Daniel. Now let me make a brief introduction into what FinTech actually is. So we are all kind of on the same page. And then we'll proceed to, to our panelists and asking questions. Uh, FinTech is the term used to refer to innovations in the financial and technology crossover, and typically refers to companies that use technology to provide financial services to either businesses or consumers. So FinTech describes any company that provides financial services through software or other technology and includes anything from mobile payment applications to cryptocurrency. And uh, the nations leading this revolution are Nordic countries, Sweden and Norway. Uh, Sweden, which uh, one report published last year uh, said would be the first country running solely on digital and car payments. This is a result of cash payments in the country decreasing very, very fast. And the proportion of Swedes using cash has fallen from 40% in 2010 to only 9% in 2020 according to Sweden Central Bank. And Norway claims to use less cash than any other country in the world, according to their central bank. And uh, only 4% of total spending in the country that was made uh, during the autumn months this year uh, was phys in physical cash. Everything else was uh, completely digital. And so these Nordic and some other countries are doing pretty well. And let's now hear from our panelists, where do we stand? Uh, I would like to ask uh, Mr. Kenan Karcic first. Uh, Kenan, please tell us in short, how does your company impact the FinTech scene in our country and what are your solutions that you have worked on? Uh, okay, uh, so uh, I will just uh, uh, connect uh, to what you said. Yes, uh, FinTechs are designed actually to challenge and eventually observe uh, traditional financial service providers. Uh, by that, I mean banks, and by being more nimble, serving uh, uh, under, uh, underserved segments or providing faster or better services. And so for sure, they are doing this. And the question is, what uh, is our connection as a traditional bank with FinTech? Uh, well, uh, there's a very strong connection and for a quiet time. Uh, traditional banks actually should engage with the trend and uh, with the FinTechs in order to make its business sustainable for the future. And uh, uh, what we as a Raiffeisen are doing, uh, actually main two things. First is uh, we are uh, working uh, on adoption of digital tools and de development of digital skills among the general population. 
Uh, and the second thing is that uh, we are supporting innovation and entrepreneurship developments uh, and future ease of running a digital business. I will briefly uh, elaborate both. Uh, uh, we are all known that uh, uh, banking sector is among the most digitalized industries and banks are investing a lot into, into technology and security. Uh, uh, but uh, and also users are already familiar that uh, uh, they can use internet banking, mobile banking, and other applications. And we, as a bank, few years ago uh, introduced, for example, Viber banking, which was one of the first uh, uh, of solutions of this kind at the market. Uh, 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 you can do money transfer, depositing a checks with your smartphone, bypassing bank or. or, or uh, bank branch actually to apply for a credit or any other product uh, uh, of the bank, generally with, without the assistance of, of the people. These solutions were implemented with the help of big uh, local and regional companies. And it is not only, uh, uh, sorry, uh, it's not only important to, to implement these kind of solutions, it, it is important to engage customers to use them. Uh, we are constantly promoting its benefits, working on adoption and edu education of our clients, and we provide support. And what is very important, to implement an agile way of doing business, we are one of the rare of banks, uh, uh, banks which are doing this. We are constantly developing and improving the futures of our uh, uh, digital channels uh, for our customers uh, based on the feedback we are, we are rece receiving from them. Apart from this, we, we went one step further. Uh, considering what is happening on the global market and regional scene, uh, we realized that uh, uh, global players like uh, Revolut 1026 and similar global players uh, uh, will come to our country uh, soon. And we decided not to wait, but to prepare for them. And uh, we started a fintech joint venture company uh, called ESP with our uh, big uh, partner, uh, BH Telecom, and two local ICT companies. And we started uh, actually uh, implemented uh, uh, something uh, which was not existing at the local market. Uh, it is online payment application or OPA. And what, it is, what is OPA actually? It's not a regular uh, mobile application. It's a payment ecosystem. And uh, you can use it uh, to pay uh, uh, your bills at the merchants uh, by scanning QR code or send and receive money to, to your family and friends, uh, pay utility bills uh, uh, and a lot of other features. And it's different uh, because it's not meant to be only for customers of our bank, uh, uh, but uh, also for customers of other banks. And uh, we can say that it's, it's real hit uh, <laughs> at the market. And uh, there are a couple of other players who announced similar application after, uh, after us, which confirms that uh, the idea is great. And uh, just last week, we, uh, we had a celebration. It was uh, one year since it was publicly uh, issued and announced uh, uh, for our customers. The second thing is uh, this support to, to innovation and entrepreneurship development. So uh, since 2017, uh, Ray Faisen uh, started with an interesting regional uh, startup challenge called the Elevator Lab. And uh, it is a contest of local and reg regional startups and fintech companies. Winner of this local uh, 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 contest is going uh, actually to the regional contest uh, where they are battling with uh, uh, startups from Croatia, Serbia, and other regional companies. This year, uh, uh, we had a local elevator lab a couple of weeks ago, and just recently on Monday, we completed a, a regional one, and the challenge was broadcast as live uh, even in Singapore, since it was a big uh, part of a big fintech uh, uh, conference, uh, which was held in Zagreb. But what we do through this program, we are not only supporting innovation and entrepreneurship, we are also supporting young people to stay in Bosnia and Herzegovina, and we are trying to prevent this brain drain, which is a common issue of this region. A part of this, we are implementing, uh, actually a part of all of what I said, uh, uh, where we are implementing new technologies and digital solutions, we implemented uh, something which is called remote sales. And why we did it? Uh, it, it is because we want to reach our customers through a simple and, and, uh, and user-friendly application uh, to provide uh, financial services and financial advisory for our customers remotely. So they, they should not come uh, to the bank. Uh, they can do uh, all financial services uh, from, from the uh, comfort of their home or, or offices. 
And uh, all these uh, effects of digitalization are changing actually the daily habits of our customers. And for example, our clients now prefer more uh, cashless contact uh, payments uh, uh, over cash. And of course, we can say that uh, cash will not disappear, disappear or uh, uh, will be cashless soon. But uh, uh, for sure, there will be less cash. And uh, say as we are having less uh, documentation, expecting his signature to be approved. And uh, I can say that our company, Raiffeisen, is showing leadership in these areas. And our goal is to provide easy access to financing and become digital bank, but uh, with the human touch. And we see this as our competitive advantage. Thank you very much, Kenan. I think we are very glad to, to hear that there are actually options and solutions and uh, applications to use. And that they are in development and they are gaining uh, traction among, among consumers. I'm very glad to hear that. Now, I would like to ask our another panelist, Mr. Gazibegovic. Uh, Orhan, would you please tell us about uh, monetary payment solutions and what are you, as a private company, exactly doing to, to empower our fintech scene? Uh, thank you, I mean, that, that's a good question. Uh, it's, I, would, I would sum it up pretty simply. Okay, our main mission is just to uh, put, uh, connect uh, merchants and end customers. And that is what we do actually through our very versatile and advanced platform of e-commerce. Uh, with e-commerce, you have no limitations. Actually, you can be a member of any bank, you could be client of any bank, be on a different continent, uh, you can pay at any time. So that's, that is what our platform does. Uh, we are actually a payment facilitator for, for both, both Visa and MasterCard and we are certified platform. So the security is uh, top notch and that is one of our main focuses, uh, the security of uh, payments. So uh, what do we actually do? Uh, we enable uh, end users who own any type of card, any type of card from any country or any bank to pay at uh, merchants in Bosnia and Herzegovina and also the other countries, but we are, we are focusing on the local market. So that was uh, one of the main, main uh, features during this lockdown and, uh, and the COVID-19 situation, where most of the people were uh, forced to stay in their homes. Most of the retailer uh, chains and the stores were closed. So they were unable to, to purchase and uh, maintain their, their uh, way of life. Yeah, most of the, most of the people, uh, what was uh, mostly needed, for example, are the shoes. People couldn't buy uh, shoes for their, ki for, for their kids. So that, that was one of the uh, best sale merchandise during the, the COVID-19 period, period, believe it or not. So uh, actually with e-commerce and with monetary payments platform, we enabled customers to maintain their uh, standard way of living by purchasing online. Uh, and many of the merchants in Bosnia really uh, flexibly embraced this, this new way and this new channel of sales. And we uh, really saw this uh, immense uh, growth of uh, e-commerce sales uh, in the last period. So it's unmeasurable uh, with, uh, with previous years. And actually we even had uh, more growth uh, than, than, uh, than it is, uh, currently statistics say than, than in the USA. For example, they had the 47% growth uh, 2019 Thanksgiving and 2020. Uh, but in uh, uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina, we measure growth of 56% uh, in e-commerce uh, sales in, in uh, uh, 2019 versus 2020. So that is basically uh, uh, what our platform offers. Thank you very much, Orhan. Uh, I was trying I... To, to be short as possible and just give facts, you know, uh, of our platform and what our company does. Seems like we have a reason to be optimistic in regards to fintech in our country. I'm very, very glad to hear that someone who, who comes from the technology background. Uh, thank you, Orhan, very much. Uh, I would like to ask now you, Janan, uh, as you've been a part of an amazing and inspiring story called Naga. Uh, would you please tell us a little bit more uh, how that came into being and uh, what it is that you're doing exactly? 
Uh, yes, yes, for sure. So uh, how it came into being, like, like most of the uh, successful startups, actually, uh, someone that is uh, working with uh, something that's not working for them, for example, like, uh, like you know, Musk uh, created Tesla, etc., and then he was placing all these chargers on the, his way from the home to the, the business to make it easy for him, etc. Here, the band, the founder, Ben Bilski, uh, was actually working in a bank. It was a financial bank, uh, investment bank, sorry, investment bank, uh, wh- whose founder was the youngest uh, banker in Germany. Like with 28 years of age, he gained that uh, like banking license. And while working at that company, he was actually like... Uh, uh, into the whole the forex the brokerage business and so that's quite complex like even if you open some of the best brokers now uh, a few years ago you would just see some huge charts etc you would not know what's happening and uh, the bro- the forex world is quite huge so pardon me for like comparing but it's i believe it's only because behind the triple x industry in terms of earnings uh, throughout the world like uh, so there is a place for something to be done there so his idea was mainly to like uh, make it uh, like approachable to others and to have it like uh, it was called swipe stocks at first naga was called swipe stocks why because uh, it, it wanted to uh, have approach toward the trading similar to, we, to what was there back then uh, for the Snapchat or something like you swipe trades basically. So you can uh, register into the application and then you see these experts that are already trading and you are swiping and copying their trades, but you don't like what you like. So basically you are offering users easier way to potentially earn money on trading, on buying stocks, etc. So that was the uh, like basic idea. Later on, how it happens. Like Tinder for, for, for stock market, right? Yes, yes. Tinder for stock market, <laughs> definitely. Like or something. Cool. So basically, it, it was like, it was commercialized like that. Like uh, there are a few videos on YouTube where you can see like, uh, because at back then we earned a few rewards. Like we were all, those summit, uh, also we were in uh, uh, like uh, a few events in USA and we were earning some rewards, etc. But as it happens with all startups, the initial, yeah, this is what uh, I would like to everyone that's listening to that. What happens with most of the startups, initial idea gets changed. That's how it happens. Like uh, rarely do you see something that is uh, from its inception to when it succeeded the same. Rarely do you see that. Like uh, it happens. Maybe I, I'm not familiar with uh, those things, but uh, it changed in a way that uh, now it's... Uh, more of a fintech so basically it was offering just a white label previously as an idea to other brokerages but now it's brokerage on its own uh, recently just recently we also launched our naga uh, pay application that is basically competitive to the revolut and then 26 we have a few advantages uh, mostly because of our uh, brokerage background because uh, in the uh, fintech world, that's uh, what I would also like to everyone know, the most important things later on are licenses, are licenses. And those are the things that uh, keep, keep you like behind others if you don't try to obtain them. You can start small and uh, have no, basically no licenses, maybe white label for something. And when you get familiar, when you get some investment, then try to obtain as many licenses as possible because those will help you uh, in your business. Uh, for example, Revolut, uh, when it started, it basically didn't have a- any license. After that, I believe that uh, they have EMI license. And now, like uh, one or two years ago, they got their own banking license. Similar thing is happening also to Naga. So we are acquiring licenses and uh, because we have the brokerage license, we can actually offer something that Rollout and N26 do not. For example, they are offering uh, to keep like uh, these, uh, your credit cards, like uh, digital uh, payments, etc., loans, uh, stuff like that. But here we also offer instant purchase of stocks 
without provision, for example. That, that's, that's the fintech. So just to go back, when you explain what the fintech was, you said like, that is like combining technology with uh, uh, like financial institution, et cetera. I would say uh, it's not like that because if it was like that, every bank would be fintech because there is no business today that is not using technology. There's no business. Like even if you have uh, like small uh, shop or something like that, you are using technology. You are using internet. You are using like uh, you are to pay something. You are using technology. For me, fintech is startup in financial technology that is trying to change things for the better of the people and of course earn money in the end. But they are trying to change things and be more approachable to the uh, people. That's it. That, that's the fintech for me, like uh, basically not just that you are a financial company using technology because everyone is using, like Canon said, uh, banks are using technology since its inception, maybe. But sometimes along that way, they stopped advancing because they were too huge. They were too big and the regulations were too big and they stopped advancing. And that is where fintech and startups in financial technology step in because they are more agile, they can move faster and uh, they find these, uh, let's say loopholes where they can uh, approach customers in a more user-friendly way, offer some things that bank normally do not offer. Thank you very much, Jen. And sounds to me like entrepreneurship 101 in short. Uh, Mr. Baraj, uh, I've seen you, 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 you're taking some notes as of, uh, uh, while Jenna was talking. Uh, I would like to ask you, since you have worked for so many uh, huge uh, fintech companies and PayPal is probably uh, everyone's favorite, uh, will you please tell us how does PayPal uh, exactly impact uh, people's finances and how you help them? So... Thank you guys, it's just brilliant. And you can call me Daniel, by the way, but um, going back to PayPal and FinTech, you know, certainly what we have seen is, is evolution of an industry and space to remarkable levels, I would say. And, and, and even when I was at PayPal, it wasn't as, as pronounced and, and prominent and strong as it's, as it's being driven right now. And I think it's being driven along the lines of payments, innovation, in, in insurance, lending and investments, really. Now, at, at the point in time when I was at PayPal, which is quite some time ago, you know, you could argue that it's a payments company, but to, to a an, an FinTech expert observer, you would fairly quickly realize it's actually a risk assessment company. And, and my role was to lead the risk of a, a team, about 18 engineers, basically coming up with very complex data and, and assessment models that just in time at any given point in the, in the customer life cycle determines um, what type of services, what type of credit risk, what type of uh, resource allocation, what, what kind of action to take upon customers' activity on the platform. And, and it's certainly what it did for, you know, I use PayPal today and I use it even more and more as, you know, if you, if you think about uh, having an account and, and payments method where you are able to pay in 187, 200 countries without ever having to, again, repeatedly um, enter your payment information, card information, bank account, it, it's just in terms of the user experience and, 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 and how it, now back to your question, how it really changed is what it did is essentially simplified and democratized the user experience which then drew merchants to PayPal because merchants essentially realized the degree and, and, and significance of having very, very seamless online payment system that would essentially pull payments in the back so merchants can focus on the core uh, of their activity. And I, I think that's in a nutshell what FinTech is and how it came about is merchants realized that managing the ecosystem of user relationships and, and that engagement and loyalty and awareness is done much easier by managing payments and having payments information, understanding the, the, how the value is moving from one side of the specter to another, segmenting user behavior, all of that can be done um, through payments. 
again, back to your question around PayPal, what PayPal did very, very neatly is essentially understood the risk associated with payments transactions across the globe. And this is not only credit, but fraud risk. And then essentially took out those pockets of risks and innovated by adding user-friendly, consumer-friendly, merchant-friendly solutions uh, onto the platform. I hope that answers the question. Yeah, thank you very much, Daniel. Uh, to summarize the, you, your guys' uh, short, short introduction of uh, what your company, uh, what your companies are doing in, in the fintech scene, it seems like very interesting, very uh, new, very entrepreneurial, and uh, a, a field to go in if you wanna uh, catch the future wave. Is how I would like to how I would summarize the, the fintech industry as of today. Uh, I would like uh, to, to, to go into the sec second segment of uh, tonight's panel, and that is uh, asking questions uh, in, in regards to your guys' uh, uh, past experiences and connecting them to, to the present ones and summarizing it uh, all, all together. Uh, Kenan, uh, by the way, we'll, we'll go by the first name since we are all kind, kind of friends here already. And thank you, Daniel, for, for reminding me of, of that. Uh, Kenan, in December last year, uh, the Banking and Finance Committee of the American Chamber of Commerce in the Bosnia and Herzegovina, which you presided over, uh, organized a very interesting and very uh, useful roundtable on the topic of digital transformation, which was conceived as uh, the beginning of a dialogue uh, on digitalization that should take place in the future. Uh, among the topics discussed were uh, financial innovations, digital signature and its application and the legal framework of digitalization. What are your thoughts on the current situation? Where do we stand? And uh, should we probably look up to countries like Sweden, Norway or Lithuania, which is also, by the way, one of the most advanced, one of the most advanced fintech countries? Uh, yes, I was part of Amgen for four years, like you said, and it was a really great time for me. Uh, just for the sake of better understanding for all the audience, American Chamber of Commerce uh, role is to promote American business interests here in, in the country, but also to uh, improve business environment and high standards of commercial practice. And uh, Amchar members are gathering together into committees related to specific topics uh, uh, or challenges, uh, and they are trying to address them to important stakeholders in the country. And uh, what we did, we organized this event, uh, actually one of the committees, banking committee organized the event to identify all what we can do together and what we need in order uh, to complete these activities we want to do uh, uh, in order to improve our services uh, for our customers. And uh, what I can say that uh, we had that event five years, uh, one year ago, actually in December last year, and more or less, uh, 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 I think that we were, where were we at that time, we are at the same point today. Uh, we have a valid law for electronic signature from 2006, but it is not aligned with uh, uh, European standards and regulation. Uh, experts are saying that uh, it, uh, it is not useful and, and it needs to be replaced. And it, of course, that it needs to be harmonized when we get the new law harmonized with other laws and regulations in the country. On the other hand, uh, business community, especially banks, are seeking for the opportunity uh, to, uh, to implement it in practice uh, uh, in order to, uh, to implement full end-to-end -end process for our customers. What I mean by this, I mentioned that uh, the customers can apply for a loan uh, online. Uh, but again, uh, uh, and they can actually finish 95% of the process over there, but again, they need to come to the branch to finish the procedure, sign the documents. We want to eliminate this final step and uh, 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 I would say uh, enable everything to be completed online. Uh, uh, so we cannot keep this. Uh, uh, so uh, banking sector is one of the most regulated sector uh, or industry, but we are missing one regulation, which is above the banking sector uh, in order to provide these services. We are willing actually to invest in, and to go uh, further with the, with the solutions, uh, but someone needs to, allow, uh, to actually enable us to implement this. 
you mentioned some countries, and uh, uh, recently I read one uh, very important, I would say, study or survey. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, that survey was done by McKinsey, and uh, they said that they are like uh, uh, top performers in uh, digital area, I, I mean, uh, countries. And then uh, there are top countries, like these big uh, countries, and also there are challenges, challengers. And we are not uh, among any of this group. Uh, but uh, now what we, we can do, we can look for these uh, countries, uh, what they do, and actually try to implement what they are doing. And a specific topic was uh, related to Lithuania uh, as a country, what they did. And actually, they, uh, Lithuania, uh, I was, uh, they, they were one of these challenger uh, countries. And they, they identified that uh, traditional engines of growth in economy are not uh, uh, sufficient anymore. And they need to look for the next growth uh, 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 level. And they uh, defined that they need to, uh, go, uh, to uh, go more into digital economy in order uh, to, 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 to uh, uh, grow and uh, catch up with digital front runners. And they identified uh, a huge potential uh, in CE, in terms of growth, uh, there's uh, like uh, uh, 200 million billions uh, in EU, euros potential in this region until 2025. And they address the gaps uh, in digitalization uh, for private and public sector. Uh, they defined uh, uh, what they should uh, work on. Uh, in order to be better, they focused on education in primary schools, uh, in the, uh, also to have more graduates in technical schools, uh, to uh, improve infrastructure and uh, have more structure uh, economic growth. And actually, uh, uh, what we what, what we see here, uh, they are approaching it in in a structural way. Uh, what we cannot see here, and uh, this is the role of AMCHEM and similar organizations to address this and to get more structure into the country and more regulation, which will enable not only banks, but also startups and all, all industries uh, to, to digitalize more. Thank you very much, Kenan. Uh, to, to continue on this uh, point, uh, excuse me, Janan, uh, I, I still would like to, to reply. Here. Yes, yes, yes. I would just like to say, like, uh, uh, we were mentioning Lithuania, but uh, uh, Estonia might be even, like, uh, I believe... I agree, I just wanted to... to better to, to, better to example up. here. So exactly. if you search, that's the problem. So if you search, for example, how to open a startup, any startup, let alone a fintech startup in Bosnia, you will find these some events that are privately held, maybe like these events that uh, Raiffeisen Bank is also holding, which I don't like, uh, don't prefer mentioning any company, but uh, you will find only these things. In fintech world, in order to have startups, you need to have backing, backing of the country there. So uh, fintech world in terms of startups is uh, probably the hardest one to be in to try to do something. Uh, but when you are in, then uh, you are also hard to get out of that one, like because of all the rules. So you're pretty much, if you succeed, you, uh, as we see with banks, etc., you'll be uh, hardly taken off that spot. But uh, for example, if you go to Estonia, they have e-estonia dot, I, I believe it's dot com or something like that, uh, the page and there, it's a public page where they are bragging not only about the startups like private companies, but public things. So you see there that 99% of state services are online. So everything for that state, 99% things are online there. And there yeah, are also- 99% of public services are available uh, online. You online, are available online. And that is, that, is the, that, that is foundation for fintech, of course, on all the other startups, you probably don't need your country to back you up. For example, if you do startup, social network, etc., you don't need that one. But in fintech world, you unfortunately do need to do that. So pardon me taking that this much time, but uh, I would like the panel to be interesting to kind of like uh, people and to hear something, to understand what's happening in fintech and why we are not getting things like, for example, uh, zero fees when purchasing stocks. This can be done without country. For example, Raiffeisen Bank can offer zero fees there because uh, currently in order to buy stocks, 
I need to go to Raiffeisen Bank, not online, register, have some account there. And then via email send every stock that I need to buy. And per stock, I'm paying fee. And then I'm paying on top of that another fee. So quite a few fees in order to buy stocks. And we have quite a few people wanting to buy that. And they are pushed aside because who would like that? You need to have like 200% like ROI in order to get something for that after you like withdraw the money after to pay all the fees. So just to go back to the Estonia. So if you go to that, that site, you will see basically that they have 1000 plus startups for no, for a number of unicorns, even uh, like uh, Croatia catching up. They have one unicorn, probably another one with uh, now Remats that I put uh, like uh, in front of Tesla, Tesla is normally near Remats for me at least. Uh, in terms of uh, like, in terms of who is running that, I don't see one guy having uh, uh, like uh, creating. I don't know, like PayPal creating something else. There's something behind that, but that's just my opinion. Like you cannot be expert in all, all of these areas. But they are ranked number one startup friendliness index venture. This, this is all listed there, and this is all driven by the country. In order to have this in fintech world, we need to be driven first with the country in front with all these regulations. For example, uh, not a lot of are familiar with the uh, open banking API initiative that's happening. That's already across the whole Europe. What that means is that uh, it was starting to be introduced with this whole GDPR thing. Basically, you are in charge of your own data. For example, I'm registered and I will not now like do, I'm registering some bank and I'm purchasing stuff using the credit card, purchasing stuff online. So all these things are my data, but I cannot use it anywhere. So first it uh, was introduced, I believe 2018 in January, like as a law in UK that their top eight banks have to provide open bank APIs. What that means, they will have an API where I, as a, a, like a user of that bank or something like that, can allow third party to use that data in my name. So for example, they are pushing uh, their FinTech products. You can have FinTech product that when you open your like, uh, mobile app, you can, if you have like a, a account with four different banks, you can have it in one app. That will never happen. For example, for, uh, I don't know, Sparkas, uh, like and uh, Raiffeisen combining and building their own app. But that can happen with one FinTech product because yeah, country with digital that. wallet, With digital wallet, it can be done. But you need regulations with digital wallet. Of course, it can be done, but you need regulations. You need licenses there. And that's it. Exactly. Like, and these things we need to talk about in order to push uh, uh, fintech here in Bosnia. Thank you very much, Jenan. Uh, it's very welcome to, to, and I strongly encourage you to uh, engage in, in the same way as you just did. And it, that is exactly the point of the panel discussion for you to, to uh, interact with each other and to, to reply to something that you feel the need to. So thank you very much. Uh, continuing on this point uh, of, of regulation and uh, hard, hard procedures in, in our country, I think there's no one better in, in our country than Orhan Gazibegovic to, to discuss this topic. So Orhan, continuing on this point to put things in perspective, uh, to open a business in Bosnia and Herzegovina, uh, one needs 80 days and 13 different procedures. Exactly. And, this is, and this is an analysis done by the world a bank for 2020 and according to it our country is ranked 184th uh, out of 190 countries and it is harder to start a business only in the following six countries uh, stay with me here please Eritrea Chad Cambodia Somalia Haiti and Venezuela and it, so it is easier to start a business in countries like Ethiopia or Yemen which is in a war by the way uh, than it is in Bosnia and Herzegovina. How come? How can we speed this process up? And uh, do you think that 
making the process of registering a financial entity as smooth as possible and uh, making it fully available online, as you've already touched upon, uh, including signature, do you think it would greatly boost uh, our fintech scene? Uh, I agree completely, but I need to go back uh, to the comments from my colleague and just mention how it, is it done in, in, in other countries, in this, uh, especially Estonia. For example, they launched e-residency program in 2014. The e-residency program, you can open a company online, even if you are not a resident in the country. Can you imagine that? Everything is online. You can, uh, for me, that's very uh, usable for, for, for the end users. You can apply for passport, for, li for driving license. You can sell and buy your car online without, uh, you know, going to, 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 to the, uh, anywhere into any office and wait into the lines, you know. So as, as we already said, 99 uh, of Estonia's public services are available online. And okay, let's see what they did. How did they do that? So way back in 91, the government embarked on a series of fast track reforms to modernize the economy and determined the technology is a key way to boost economic growth. So what they did, they enforced that all schools need to use computers as a basic tool for learning. So kids from the beginning started using the computers and get used to the technology. Uh, they even started the program for the children as young as seven years old, uh, they're being introduced to the world of coding. So they start coding, you know, creating apps. But uh, they also focused on the, let's say, older population, as we uh, refer them as digital immigrants. So people didn't, uh, they didn't grow uh, with the technology. They adopted the technology or we are uh, asking them to, to adopt it and they uh, most of the time just uh, refuse it. So. Uh, they focused and they uh, offered them free computer training for all digital immigrants and older population. Uh, they achieved percentage of 91 uh, or percent of the population using internet. So when you have that much public using the internet and are introduced with FinTech, you can then uh, end uh, available uh, legislature and legal, legal regulations that support FinTech and technology you can you can do anything you can you can create e-residencies you can create e-estonia as my colleague said so how do we do it in bosnia uh so there are, i would like to emphasize two things uh you take uh, which one is more important and which is more uh, a priority for us so we have our mentality and we have the legislature the the legal legal regulations so two things um we have uh, so much young people here who are using technology. All of them use Instagram, all of them use Facebook, but not, uh, not all of them are using mobile bankings. No, they're, they're afraid. They are not, uh, somebody will steal their money. Uh, that's not safe. Online payments and digital channels are safer than cash. That's it. So uh, how do we, uh, in, in, how do we, how do, how do they start using the, the technology? First, to educate them. Second, we need to give them benefits. We need to give them some incentives. Uh, gamification, great thing to do it. Let's, let's do an app with the gamification. Banks uh, can also do it. I, I'm sure Kenan was thinking about it at one point at the time, because I already did uh, when I was working uh, in that position. So uh, we need to educate young people and give them benefits, give them, give them rewards for using technology. It's already being done. It's much, uh, it's much more expensive if you go to, to a branch of a bank and try to pay a bill or something, but people are still standing in lines with their paper bills, waiting for them to, to get paid because they're afraid to use mobile uh, and electronic bankings, even ATMs. Uh, and that would be that, uh, let's say, cash mentality. People just love using cash and are afraid of using fintechs because mobile and electronic banking, banking are also a part of fintechs. Uh, and what, what else? The other thing, that's the law, the regulator. We need to adjust the laws so they're more fintech friendly and online friendly. 
uh, as my colleagues already mentioned, if you want to come to, to, to if you want to apply for a loan, you want to get a loan from a bank, okay, we always, you know, okay, one visit to the branch. Most of the times it's two or three visits, unfortunately. A person has to come to the bank three times to get a loan. Uh, neighboring countries have, have already launched online, online, uh, online uh, loans, uh, which work. They work, but, but what they did, they adjusted the laws. So uh, you don't have to uh, provide uh, with the KYC procedure as we are need. We are currently in Bosnia, we have to do that. Uh, client has to come to the bank and sign the paper from the bank. He cannot sign it with a digital signature or whatever because it's uh, still not existent. Thank you very much, Orhan. I, I believe Jenan would like to add something to what you just said. Yes, I just wanted to say like uh, it's not only the you are right again like uh, when people wait in line to pay it's it's quite strange. Even I started using like uh, online payments maybe just three years ago, uh, but for some things, uh, so I'm still getting receipts uh, via e via standard mail, but for I'm like taking picture and then like uh, paying for the those receipts. Okay, but we know thing, we know we know which bank's customer you are. <laughs> yes, but one one thing one thing is uh, one thing there is uh, that. Uh, but if you are referring to Rai Pfizer, I'm not. <laughs> uh, no, there is the the other bank who will Sparkasse uh, launched that first one. So yes, uh, so uh, there the problem is, but I I have to say this: what I didn't like from them at this perfect like bank. So they had like, uh, uh, I, I believe 30 KF per receipt. If it's, uh, uh, if you are paying some receipt that's, uh, uh, you are paying to other banks uh, like uh, account. And if it's a spark asset, it, it was free. Then uh, all of a sudden I was paying, it was 60 for other bank and 30 for their own bank. What? And I got some notification that's not push notification. It was somewhere else. I called them, hey guys, uh, I, I believe you see now how much I have on my account and how big a loan I got from you. So I'm maybe probably important customer. Why did you do this? Like, what's happening? Like, I didn't sign anything. How can they change something that I didn't sign again? So uh, that's that's something that's happening. I think here you sign it. I think you sign it. Probably <laughs> somewhere because I was when, <laughs> because when, yeah. When I was like getting the loan from Sparkasse, I basically signed blank papers because I didn't want to waste time being there. I signed blank paper, papers. I said, just fill it in. I don't care. And true story, that's what's happened. And then well, I got I, I just I just need to, 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 to draw a parallel. Uh, when you mentioned the, the photo, photo pay app, yes. uh, I, this, this, I want to emphasize, emphasize how uh, FinTech quicks, how quick and how fast it moves. Back in 2016, we had a meeting and we were considering uh, implementing the photo pay uh, functionality into our uh, mobile app back in my previous positions. And uh, for some reasons, we found it not user-friendly. I had an idea. I don't want to take picture of anything. I just want to click and pay, okay? And we didn't implement PhotoPay. Now, a couple of years ago, I mean, not, not now it's too far away, but even in 2018, when I looked back and said, I need to take a photo of, 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 an, uh, of a bill, that's outdated, that's old. So that's, that's how quick it moves. You have one feature, which is, uh, today it's 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 so it's so modern it's so cool it's so new but in two years it's already outdated there are so many functionalities that that were interesting a couple of years ago uh now they're just too old and and, and too uh, i don't want to say lame but they're they're outdated i don't know if you if you uh, agree because i don't know if you're using actually the photo pay but there are functionalities that you just you get your bill into your mobile app and you just click and pay it that's it you don't have yes yeah, unfortunately that's the, that's the, yes that's the moment sorry sorry uh uh Jenan, uh there's the moment where where uh the, the story about uh for example agile way of doing business is jumping in 
uh, actually, uh, and also fintechs where they are jumping in. Uh, every day they need to explore and challenge the processes and everything in order to improve them. Uh, and uh, and uh, banks are uh, trying to adopt them. And also you're having this like new players which are coming uh, at the market. So actually uh, you have to, every day you have to check what is new, uh, how you can improve your channel, your service, uh, in order to keep your customers and get new customers. And actually, it's not only for the banks, it's relevant for the startups and for all kinds of businesses, especially today when we had, we had uh, I think that Orhan just mentioned that everything is going online. So you, you just need to keep, uh, keep up uh, with the pace, uh, which is even speeding up uh, uh, more than we expected because of this situation. Yeah, yeah, <clears throat> I agree completely. You need to be on your heels, let's say like that all the time. Uh, but what Orhan said, like, so I'm using that uh, take picture and pay. It's not the best, but it's what it's being offered to me. So I'm using that. What I wanted to also tackle here is that for some things, uh, for example, all majority of my bills are coming to my email because I could apply online to get them on the email. And uh, for some of them, for example, it was, I believe, for uh, electric bill, bill, and uh, I don't know, uh, second one, I believe it's uh, for water bill. I need to go and sign a document to get that bill. So I need to be present in person. I hate those things. Like whenever I need to go somewhere in person, I send someone else. It's not because I'm like uh, too busy, but I don't like doing that. And that's this case with uh, a majority of people who just want to concentrate probably on their job and use their free time not to chase around some things, but maybe play some Fortnite, be with their family, etc., or do both at the same time. If you have like a few computers, so you play it together. So that's the thing. And we need to think about in that direction and, uh, uh, and think that direction. So quite a few things like, uh, I'm not sure why, for example, I need to sign my papers to get water bill, but for others, like, uh, like my internet bill, I do not need to sign that. That's the problem here. So, so if somebody uh, else takes yes, your bill you just, and you don't just, pay it, you, you, you will uh, get disconnected from the, from the water company. Daniel, I give you word. Sorry. Yeah. I'll, just to kind of frame something, you know, from my perspective, I, I feel your pain and I understand what you're dealing with, but I'll also let you know, you know, politicians and legislators are not innovators. And, and, and think that I have seen here, there is a concept coin in the United States calling pushing the envelope. Uh, or, or uh, doing mistakes now and asking for forgiveness later. Like, in essence, you cannot wait for the legislation to push in and to create a framework. Yes, that is in an ideal case where you have, you know, a political, where you have, uh, uh, you know, you brought up Sweden, Denmark, societies that are very transparent and permeable in terms of new customs, new cultures, new ideas coming through. But um, usually what happens where I am, for example, is certain, certain trends will exist for a while until politics comes in and starts regulating them. So as you are developing platforms, you basically have to decide whether or not you are going to be a ninja, a Jedi, or a pirate, right? So in, we know it, in FinTech, you cannot really be a pirate and, and just basically say, who cares what I do? I, who cares what everyone thinks? I do whatever I want. But if you are... You know, I, I was just, I lived for a while in, in Switzerland and you, you will be surprised, you know, an, an anecdote uh, famously quoted by Einstein who said, you know, if there is a nuclear war, I will go to Switzerland. And they asked him, well, why? And he said, well, everything comes late to Switzerland. So it's going to be 25 years until the effects of the nuclear war come to Switzerland. And I was... I was surprised when I lived in Switzerland that when I compared us before 1990s, how advanced actually we were even in, at that time in, in, in coming up with, with new industries, coming up with things. And, and even today we have, you know, tremendous opportunity, tremendous people, tremendous potential. And, and frankly, I, I don't think we can, the people right now managing these things in, in the government, in the parliament, as an innovator, as an investor, and, and, you, this is where I thought maybe we would have taken our discussion. But when you talk about fintech, you can't really wait for banks to innovate. Like 
pardon my colleagues from Raufeisen, but fintech is not banking space. It, it, it's this nice, someone brought up crossroads, but it's intersection of private capital, VC, consumer needs on one side, the, the companies like Apple and Google, they just can't wait for someone in Washington, in DC, or here in California to come up with regulation to enable them to make their customer service and customer experience simpler on Apple, for example. So I will not advise you how to push that envelope, you know, to go to your congressman, to, to whom you can, the Chamber of Commerce can talk, but you know, the other the other thing is what I found interesting is that the new mayor of Banja Luka basically said, well, if my, when my dad couldn't do business in Banja Luka, he just basically founded companies in Slovakia and Slovenia, right? And there he can do easily business. So, uh, you know, I, I feel your pain because I've often been, you know, I'm in the finance space, but I've worked for free enterprises, if you want. The, the only one financial company, financial transaction processing company that I worked with for was PayPal. But I have to come up with, with concepts on a, on a daily basis to basically say, hey, yeah, I, I understand this is the regulation, but I need to simplify. And so we push things through PayPal, where basically my financial operations are and, and risk and all the constructing of a financial entity within software as a service, within marketplace, all of that is outsourced to a payfac or a money transmitter license holder or, or someone else. But it's basically, I, you know, if this serves you as an inspiration, you just, and I understand you are from the financial spaces, but if you are a, a business that's trying to, you know, disrupt some space in Bosnia or in nearby countries or globally, you just can't wait for someone in, in Sarajevo or Meluka or in Mostar to say, hmm, let me think about this. Okay, I'll I'll put this through the, you know, and 10 years later, we may agree on, on you know, how to help you out. Thank you very uh, much, Daniel. I would like uh, yeah, sorry, Amy, I would just like to, to, to rely on what uh, Daniel said. Uh, and he's totally right when he's saying that uh, banks are, uh, when we talk about banks in fintech, it's strange. And uh, banks are big uh, systems, uh, sometimes slow systems. I cannot uh, say something uh, other because I'm coming from the bank. But uh, this is, the, I think that uh, the, the goal of why I was invited here is uh, because we are, uh, we as a bank are trying to do something different. Uh, one thing is, uh, you know, it's hard to, to invent something, to bring something new uh, uh, from the bank side. Uh, even we are trying to. Uh, but again, uh, in the other way, uh, we identified that uh, through the fintech, uh, we can, we can uh, achieve something else. And we decided to invest, to start a company. Uh, of course, it's easier for the bank when it has a capital uh, and to, to, to do this. But in, in the other hand, we are not only doing this and investing, we are trying to support uh, this fintech community, startup community through this elevator lab, uh, which I mentioned. And also, uh, it, it, we are not uh, stopping here. Now, uh, uh, our part is to educate and uh, people uh, also to use these technologies. And uh, uh, this, is, uh, this is our role. O of course, uh, we are talking about uh, uh, startups they need to do their job. And uh, uh, my, my opinion is, okay, we went maybe too far with, uh, with Estonia. Estonia is in these uh, top uh, countries, uh, digital front runners. Uh, uh, I mentioned Lithuania because it's, it's more closer to us in terms of the size and uh, how far they, they went uh, from us. Uh, uh, so like, we uh, need to go step I by. just like we, to be inspired, you know. I just like to be inspired. Yeah, because, yeah that's that's good. That's good. But again, uh, they are, I think, too far from us. We need to go step by step. And uh, uh, of course, uh, uh, we need to, to, to secure the environment and ac actually build the culture of entrepreneurship. I have to be honest. Uh, recently, we, I mentioned we had this Elevator Lab Challenge. It was very hard to find uh, startup companies to apply and to uh, be part of the challenge. You know, uh, we don't have this community developed here. We have some uh, very successful examples, but they are not providing their services locally. They are providing their services outside of the country. And uh, uh, of course, they should do this. They should look for the, uh, a bigger opportunity and everything, but it's very hard to, succeed, uh, to, to, uh, to be successful here. So we need to do parallel things. We need to uh, encourage people, okay, 
go there, explore, invent, and do business and fight, and you will find your space somewhere else, uh, maybe find uh, this opportunity, but also in parallel to work and develop uh, the, the local community, economy, uh, legislation, everything what, it, what is needed in order for, for this to be uh, even, even uh, uh, bigger and, and more present here uh, as it is not now. Thank you very much, Kenan. Uh, as much as I love this uh, discussion, I will have to ask uh, Jenan to, to uh, kind of summarize it up and, uh, and uh, so we can proceed to other parts. We have, we have so many topics to, to discuss definitely, definitely. very I, little just, time. Definitely. Just didn't want to summarize, but one thing to take into consideration. <clears throat> Uh, at every of these things, we are pushing banks, for example, Raiffeisen as a front. Yeah, we are building that. Maybe people don't want bank names. Quite a few people think of banks as uh, evil companies. And uh, maybe I'm wrong, but I doubt that. And if you have that company and you're pushing, we are doing this, we are doing this. Even Revolut, if you go to their page, they are explaining people that they are not the bank. We are not, the, they have bank license, but we are not the bank. They are explaining people. So if you have that and you are pushing, uh, is it important to be, does, is it important for Raiffeisen to be mentioned or any other company? Or is it important for Raiffeisen to earn money? Maybe you can fund some startup. They don't know who is funding them. You are earning money. You have their interest in that startup, but it's a brand new company that people don't relate with the, Banking, with the bank, with the standard bank. That's the thing here that we also need to distinguish. Like we need to go away from also the brands that are maybe distant for people. I know a friend of mine said like, every time I walk in the bank, I'm losing something. And we want those banks to build the product for people. I have like, I had a call from OPA uh, the other day and they were explaining to me uh, what is OPA, except yeah, I know. I, I mean, I'm, I'm developing fintech products, exactly like we are disturbing the this flow on, on quite a few countries, and I'm related to that. But I'm getting a call. You, so you so you have a startup, and you need to call someone to mention that it's a all technique that's being used to get someone to use something. Maybe if I end up having the Viber message, okay, fine, Viber message, nice. I, I would need to praise also the one of these uh, political. Uh, I, I don't know how to say like uh, candidates here that was using Viber to proceed their message and email, not these huge posters, like they are using that. So we need to go there like, and maybe think about uh, like uh, having uh, our, uh, like uh, having uh, shares inside the startup, sponsoring the startup, but not putting us in front because maybe it's uh, uh, causing them more harm than good. So if it's not related to some bank, maybe, but, Probably I'm wrong. Jenan, I'm may, I, may I reply a little bit? Uh, which phone Please are be you brief, using? Kenan. Please be which, brief. Which phone are you using? Sorry, which phone you are using? The, the brand. I'm using. Uh, I'm using both phones. So I'm more fan of Apple there, but I'm using Android because I like to be closer to my customers. Would you buy it if you? If, would you buy it if it doesn't has a logo? Uh, of course. I only buy it because of the software there, because uh, I, I like think, the uh, software. Can I, can I just explain? Uh, I think you are buying it because you are sure that it's good for uh, Also with the branding, just, just to mention, uh, this is a sensitive topic which you are explaining. I know what you are thinking. Okay, Revolut, it's a global example. But here in our country, uh, people had uh, uh, some challenging experiences with the banks. And uh, uh, the, the, the trust was uh, a, a, a big question mark for them. Should they trust to the banks? And uh, here, the trust to the banks is related to the brands of the banks. So we should not forget this. And this is very important. You cannot put the money, and even you, you will not put the money on the bank account which you are not uh, sure that uh, they will uh, bring you the money back when you want to raise it or something, or when you want to use their services. So actually, this is something which is, I think, very sensitive topic. And the, the, the second one, uh, I think that uh, well, I already explained that uh, not only Raiffeisen, I'm here representing Raiffeisen, but, but other banks are really trying and encouraging and investing in, into the startups and also trying to find a way how to help them. 
Of course, uh, you have regulators who have also, you have to work for some money, but again, it, it's, it's hard, but uh, let's maybe just switch to the topic of fintechs and how they can help uh, customers, uh, how they can help uh, banks, how they can help communities, and also not only help us, but also to be successful here and outside, outside of the country. I think that's important and how we can help them to encourage them, these young people who are uh, uh, trying to, to invent, trying to challenge processes, trying to, to uh, bring something new at the market. I agree. Thank I you agree very much. You there. Jan, excuse me. Uh, we have to, to, to move on to the next segment of this panel discussion. Uh, now I would like to introduce our special guest tonight, uh, lady on this tonight's panel. Azra Hajiomeragic from Raiffeisen Bank, uh, who will take over and lead the rest of uh, the tonight's panel discussion with uh, her, with your, uh, with you, uh, her colleagues from industry. Uh, Azra has been working on her PhD uh, on digitalization in banks, necessary transformations, uh, fintechs that support or do not support these trends and why, uh, agile approach in banks and sales and so on. Azra has been in leading positions at Raiffeisen Bank for more than nine years, uh, leading the implementation of Raiffeisen I branches and cashierless trends in general. Uh, and for the last six years, Azra has held the position of uh, head of retail sales. So Azra, would you please start uh, with telling us about uh, I branches and the uh, cash trends in our country uh, from the perspective of banks, especially during this uh, COVID-19 period and uh, the stage is yours. And by the way, uh, before you start, I just have to say that uh, I love the interaction. I love how you, how you, uh, how you guys are uh, very uh, passionate about what you're uh, speaking about. And uh, thank you very much for being very honest and open-minded. This is exactly the panel discussion we wanted. And as, as, as much of your interaction and at least the amount coming from me. Thank you very much. Azra, please go on. I mean, thank you so much for this uh, kind uh, introduction. It was uh, so interesting to listen uh, to panelists, uh, uh, guests uh, about all those trends which are speeding up the digital development in financial services. I made several uh, notes and remarks on different topics that were mentioned here. I don't think I will manage to, to refer to each and every of them, but uh, definitely the discussion is giving the motivation to the bankers to transform further, or at least let's say to transform faster. Um, let me just add a few words on the trends regarding the cash usage. I saw the few uh, questions in the Q&A session and they all refer to the uh, cash usage and how what is going to happen uh, in the future. Uh, and also I I will refer a little bit on the e-branches that you mentioned. Um, basically, the cash will definitely not disappear, at least not in the near, near future. We are still a, quite a heavy uh, cash economy, but there will be less cash for sure and uh, less paper, someone mentioned, less documents. We don't want to have this burden of uh, operating costs and so on. So the digital channels are uh, taking over and uh, activity on the digital and online is, is moving, moving fast. Uh, what are the, the effects and what is happening in the branches? Branches are still loaded with some um, services that can be shifted to the self-service, uh, let's say ATMs, uh, mobile payments, uh, alternative channels, e-services as such. Uh, and uh, I think also it's not... Uh, not to be mentioned, uh, we have to mention that COVID also accelerated this whole trend. I don't think we mentioned it earlier, but it gave us a push. It gave us a nice, let's say, uh, boost and showed us that uh, it's no longer, let's say, convenient to do some consumption payments, transactions uh, on the digital channels, mobile banking and so on. But it basically it became the necessity. So uh, it kind of raised awareness among us that we need it absolutely and uh, it's a, it's a necessary to be to be digital so uh, Raiffeisen Bank I, I, I can say it's uh, is ahead of these trends in the market we are uh, really pushing the borders and the, uh, pushing the limits and even when we started uh, thinking and discussing the project of e-branches we were having this dilemma uh, was it branches or was it digital but uh, at the end of the day the answer was we have to adopt our business model we have to adopt the way of working we have to go for both we have to empower 
empower employees to use more digital technological solutions, you have to empower the clients. Uh, you have to change the whole, um, let's say, workflow in the branches to, to adapt to the new model and uh, use, let's say, to have cashless uh, locations. So uh, we even started in 2019, some pilots were mentioned, were implemented at the beginning of the year. However, the COVID stopped us, but not for too long because we continued later on uh, in the quarter, quarter three. As I said, we were then even more motivated by the COVID situation, which uh, said, okay, uh, the digital is uh, definitely a uh, necessity. So uh, what, what is the answer at the end of the day of the model is that we have to keep the branches, but we will definitely use uh, less, less cash. Uh, first reactions um, from the clients when we uh, reduced cash in, in um, now it's in the 16 locations overall, uh, it was very positive, not only by the clients, but even by the competition, which is kind of uh, recognition we everybody is looking for and it, it it's kind of uh, rare. Uh, never, nevertheless, let me go back just to a little bit uh, remarks that, that I made during your discussions because it was so interesting. Uh, I, I, I didn't uh, interrupt. Uh, the, the point about the banks and the complexity, you're, you were right about uh, uh, organizational setup. It's very complex. Uh, you're right about the regulatory framework. It's very complex, especially for the banks. So many limitations and so on. Uh, there is also mm, there are also uh, let's say many stakeholders. The banks have to negotiate many partners in the process. They have to uh, comply with, and that's not also the easy easy process. On the other hand, the banks are definitely uh, risk averse and have been always in the past and uh, in the in the in the tradition in the in the DNA. Uh, however, uh, the fintechs, on the other hand, uh, are growing up, and I don't think we should discuss uh, like uh, we're talking about some kind of uh, competition. There are advantages on both sides. Uh, when you're depositing your money, when you're saving your money, there is someone who guarantees for your money that you deposited, and these are the banks. So it's a really a matter of trust. Where I deposited money, is it safe? Do I see this visually, this brand, this location, this brand that I trust? Is it going to be there tomorrow when I come to pick it up when I need it? Uh, and uh, this is the key point because we are all very, I would say, and you might or not agree, very emotional when it comes to, to our money. So I would like to see it. I would like to see where it stands and uh, uh, can I reach it uh, any time? Uh, is it on a safe place? So this is something fintechs uh, cannot provide, at, at least not in, in, in the same scope. On the other hand, fintechs are, everybody said, and uh, I think someone used a nice term, I really liked it, democratized products like they unbundle the products, like uh, they, they don't know the borders. Uh, products are now, uh, compared to the traditional uh, financial institutions, uh, you, you're just unpacking and creating something new very fast, very convenient with a nice customer journey, very cheap and not, not so expensive as a product. And you can offer it uh, without, without saying, okay, is it in this country that it goes, without, it goes borderless? to put it that way. And also they are working in this agile mode. Now the agile mode is something that banks are taking over. It's not that we are not uh, adopting our, uh, let's say, uh, model of, of operating. And this is something we have to, we have to learn, we have to, uh, let's say, improve. Raiffeisen Bank definitely started earlier with this uh, uh, adaptive mode of, of uh, working, we are, we are learning adaptively, uh, ha heavily adaptively, let's say in, in this mode, but uh, uh, agile is something that uh, of course it takes time. Maybe it's not the pace that the fintechs have, but because uh, they have also other advantages. You're working internationally. Uh, if we have a COVID situation here and your, uh, I don't know, uh, partner doesn't have, you can still export and so on. So th there are advantages and disadvantages, but uh, everybody has a place, I would say, and we can uh, cooperate because there, there is definitely evidence of more and more cooperation between uh, back, banks and fintechs, and we learned it here. Uh, uh, from, from the colleagues who explained. May I go back a little bit to, to our guests and uh, just add a few questions on uh, to elaborate a little bit more on the topic. 
I think Orhan was mentioning at one point some, uh, let's say, obstacles on, on uh, regulatory side and how the fintechs are, are set up in our country. I saw some data that uh, there are few fintechs in the, let's say, few fintechs in the uh, Western Balkan, not so many, um, 35 in uh, Serbia, maybe even seven registered and the data are not really uh, reliable. Uh, seven in Bosnia, they are mostly operating in the payments. Uh, do you think that uh, it means, uh, as I explained earlier, how they're operating, do you think that they will continue operating only uh, and primarily in the mature markets uh, in the foreign countries? Or you think that they will also uh, turn to, to more to the domestic uh, companies and to, to the domestic market as well? Uh, well, I, I, if, we, uh, if we have audience, if we have customers, if we have clients who want uh, these these uh, fintech solutions uh, and uh, uh, merchants, banks recognize that uh, these customers are uh, good and would like to, to use those solutions. I think then the local market would also uh, become very interesting for these providers. Mm -hmm. uh, also, uh, we already uh, talked about the mentality of the people, but uh, there is also one more thing we need to consider. Uh, the new generations are coming. Mm -hmm. Digital natives are getting older by the day and getting employed by the day and getting uh, uh, yeah, no, they pay, their pay paychecks. So do you think the, the digital natives, the young uh, generations will stand in the mm -hmm. branches and in mm -hmm. front of the uh, uh, Sarajevo gas and, tr and, and stand for 45 minutes tr uh, waiting to pay a bill or mm -hmm. even go to, to, to branch to ask for something? They are definitely used to, uh, used to, to, to use just mobile phones uh, to do everything because mm -hmm. they grew up like that. So with the... Uh, uh, with the evolution and, and the, this revolution of uh, new generations coming uh, onto the market, the, the evolution of the payment system will, will uh, mm -hmm. start, will, will uh, happen, to find the word, will happen uh, just like in a very short time. So yeah. mm -hmm. then the local market, uh, do you think uh, then the local market will uh, start to be much more uh, better, uh, suitable ground, fertile ground for, for these fintechs. Mm -hmm. Uh, oh. I would, I would, yes, I would uh, definitely uh, agree with you. But uh, any other uh, things or preconditions that you see uh, or recognize that might push this uh, or accelerate this pace uh, in, in the future, like uh, um, access to resources in our country, access to the, I don't know, finance, data availability, whatever. Uh, well, uh, additional finances could, could always be uh, a benefit for for, for startups. But there are, uh, maybe I'm in, in those circles, but there are initiatives, but, but even, in, even from your company and in the other companies and even UNDP that, that finance these startups. Uh, maybe that's not mainstream yet, but there are uh, initiatives that, that, that are financing uh, and, and you know, supporting the, these, uh, these fintechs. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, the, the information that 80% of all financing from the from the European funds in the next four years will be about digitalization and digital payment. Mm -hmm. I agree. Uh, I think I mentioned that. that the banks are a little bit risk averse, so <laughs> uh, <laughs> this also counts. Um, Jenan, can you please uh, go back and just uh, refer to the position of the fintechs compared to to some uh, other industries? Uh, uh, are the fintechs more, uh, let's say, resilient to what is happening uh, uh, under this COVID situation and uh, uh, pandemic, uh, pandem uh, pandemic uh, context? So, uh, so first, uh, hi, Azra. Hi, nice. And uh, uh, regarding this, uh, well, I believe they are. Uh, and we saw this. We saw this like uh, during this period that uh, fintech, uh, among uh, like also the medical, like uh, medical technologies, et cetera, were more resilient because uh, you cannot in this world live without like, uh, of course, um, medical institutions and also with, uh, without the FinTech or not just FinTech, you cannot live without some 
financial background, etc. Mm -hmm. uh, what we saw also from like uh, I would just now refer to Naga, but I'm not in this meeting. I'm not representing Naga or MOP, but uh, my knowledge only. But what we saw is that uh, people are actually in these uh, uh, periods of life where you see that you might not end up uh, having your job for uh, some time, maybe you already lost your job, maybe you are going to lose job in the like year or so, they are trying to see, to find a way how to maybe uh, get better loans, get uh, uh, like uh, better like uh, payments with less fees, uh, get also like uh, earn more, get not sure rich, but invest their money. And they are trying to find who is offering them these services. So mm -hmm. if you have, have FinTech that will offer you to, to buy like stocks of some company or brokerage that is having uh, zero fees, you're of course going to use that. Mm -hmm. But uh, compared to others, like if you have tourism or something like that, uh, it, basically every startup there went broke and they need to change their business almost. Like uh, how many just employees Airbnb and end up firing, etc. And they are even getting uh, changing their structure. So I just wanted to also uh, make note there because a lot of times people are referring like the companies that are with uh, working with startups end up being better uh, like uh, during this COVID thing. But it's not companies that are working with startups. But uh, specific uh, uh, businesses are the ones that are better in startups. So regardless if you were a startup or if you were a bank, even banks were functionally, I would say, normally during this period uh, uh, compared to the like tourism uh, agencies, uh, hotels, or et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So it's not just uh, if it's startup or it's not, it's which business. And for sure, the medical business and the fintech financial business uh, uh, was uh, even earning more than it used to. Mm -hmm. If we see, see like that, uh, quite a few companies, for example, Amazon earned a lot of like uh, its value. I believe was third time, third times the the value when COVID started or something like mm -hmm. that. And uh, it, it's quite crazy, but. The one thing that everyone needs to also know and that uh, you need to be aware of it, if these things end up uh, uh, being too long, for example, if COVID end up be, ends up being like five years uh, like uh, present or something like that, no business can survive and everyone will have an impact there, a negative impact. So first part of that, people see, yeah, I need to invest money. I need to like provide for myself for the future, etc. But if it ends up being longer than some normal time, as again, like a few years, then every business is going to suffer from that because people will not be earning, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So during the, the this initial period, yes, financial services and uh, medical services were way better uh, in the. Uh, compared to the others but also what is important is the startups were more resilient in a way that they were faster to change their approach for example if you see mm -hmm. airbnb they could change their approach they were no longer renting because no one was like uh, no one was actually uh, leaving the country maybe they were like uh, more renting uh, only within the country or even having videos being streamed for the for the people so they were faster to adopt to the change uh in this COVID situation or any other crisis for i think we can agree that the banks also adopted this uh, need for need for speed need for a, a fast um, adoption and uh, fast uh, faster transformation um uh, you can see that the from the it industry uh, the banks took over the the model of work and they even uh, evolved from different types of uh, project management like uh, uh, let's say traditional project management approach building block by block i don't know through the six sigma which said okay, Okay, let's get. Uh, let's try to be 99% accurate. Uh, then going to the perfection. Then Lean, who is saying, uh, uh, let's get rid of the waste, and now let's respond fast to the need of the client. So we also went through this um, evolution, I would say, and uh, follow following uh, the IT industry. Have you witnessed, or um, can you can you share with us some experience? 
some example that uh, the fintechs mentioned uh, managed to let's say disrupt heavily uh, some banks mainstream banks uh, or just the opposite it didn't happen uh, well uh, just i uh, just what i wanted to say like uh, personally i really don't have anything against uh, i just like to raise questions like i believe that the best way to innovation is to raise questions and ask things that weren't asked before and then act upon that so first thing first every fintech has a bank behind so people know, need to know that like uh, when we were mentioning before that uh, needed people need to know that their money will be there returned etc you don't have a fintech now that uh, is actually uh, involved with money or even have a loans that doesn't have license and isn't uh, like uh, legislated by someone so all these uh, fintechs you cannot actually lose the money they are also, also secure that people need to know that. Uh, and there are actually banks behind. So for example, if you are uh, starting as a company where you want to offer some uh, more user-friendly experience to the people, you, you never start by becoming a bank right away. You are probably doing some white label behind some EMI that has an EMI license, which I believe Raiffeisen is offering for Bosnia, in front of Bosnia. Mm -hmm. So you are actually, uh, 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 basically having agreement with someone that you'll be white labor for them. They are having some provision, you are earning nicely, etc. Afterwards, you are getting your own EMI license. That's like electronic money, I believe, something like that license that you want. And then you can even get the banking license. So actually, uh, legally, you are a bank. But how you started is what is different. And uh, you are already in this world. You don't need to change. That, that's the huge thing. You don't need to change. Uh, like you don't need to change 10,000 people and how they think because that is uh, in your genes, I would say. In your genes that you always need to change. You are still a bank. So Revolut is a bank. And mm -hmm. people don't need to know that it is a bank. It is, doesn't have so many physical locations. Uh, but it is a bank because I believe in 2018 they got that uh, banking license for European Union and uh, that, that's the thing so I, I know that banks also changed in this way they are changing still so uh, all things considered yes and they need to change because uh, it is a bit hard for people to switch for example if you have a loan uh, you could easily go and say yeah but we have like uh, uh, 100,000 people having a loan this bank in order to, for them to switch from our bank it will take them months so we will take it easy we will not change but every bank that knows that uh, these times will change that it will be way easier to switch from one bank with loan to another bank so you need to adopt and every conscious mm -hmm. bank will do that so mm -hmm. I'm glad that this is happening for sure like uh, I previously mentioned the the up uh, like pay the up applications it's really nice to say what's being done but uh, uh, maybe sometimes the marketing can be different in a way it's just my opinion like mm -hmm. it's just my opinion but it can be different in a way that it's more approachable to people like uh, uh, and they will use it so mm -hmm. they see these benefits because mm -hmm. uh, if you look in the europe people don't care in which bank its uh, account is open they have 10 accounts here, if I have 10 accounts, I need 10 different applications. They actually have. I know people that they're, which bank, it is like, they don't know. Like uh, most of these uh, startups is also like their custody banks is Barclays for like UK, from UK. Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. It's bank where they have their own account. They don't know that. They have the account there. They don't know it. That's the thing that we need also to take care of this, like uh, just to better approach people. So mm -hmm. why Apple is more uh, uh, like uh, having, they don't always have better products. And if you look to my LinkedIn profile, you will see that I scream a lot at them, especially for MacBooks uh, and how slow they are compared to the price. So I'm not sticking all, always to the brand, but uh, <clears throat> they are approaching people in a way that is easy to understand what is happening, et cetera. So we also need to not just have a great product, but also approach people a bit differently in this way. Yeah. Okay, I, I don't think we will even manage to, to cover everything which would be interesting to, to ask in this panel discussion. Uh, Daniel, if you might just give us a short uh, view because 
you're sitting abroad and from your perspective, how it looks, do you see anything um, additional that we can have uh, in, in Bosnia as a potential incentive uh, to, to uh, push a little bit more this cooperation between banks and the, and the fintechs? Well, you know, I appreciate that you mentioned yourself and I didn't have to, to go there, but you said banks are a little bit risk averse and, and I will go to the, to the, you know, I have seen this very, the, the chasm is tremendous. You know, you had, you had a very major bank in the US that basically due to the lack of growth mm -hmm. uh, in one specific segment issued 8 million fake bank accounts just to show that they are actually progressing and that was revealed and then the bank was severely punished by the by the federal reserves here in the US. So, so you know, on, on the other side, I'm looking at the SoftBank, which is an investment bank that has just now made, for example, from the going public of DoorDash, they have made $12 billion in, in having invested only $680 million. So, so if I were, were to sort of think where, how could bank actually move, uh, you know, I would certainly think investing and supporting and, mm -hmm. and coming up with incubators to, to foster mm -hmm. this, this innovation in the ecosystem is, mm -hmm. is you know, you, one of the questions was about China and, and why they, and I talked about the payments democratization through PayPal, why they have been able to um, really grow this is, you know, the issue of scale. If you look at the sheer number of people there, uh, government working very well with banks and everyone there, probably even more than in any other country, but government is influencing everything. They, they simply have to move to cashless, right? They, they just can't manage that much cash in all the interactions in all these cities. So, um, you know, I think the, the blockchain and, and all the cur digital currencies will probably disintermediate a lot. So if I were a bank, I'd probably push, mm -hmm. you know, Emin mentioned Jamie Dimon, you know, he very quickly switched from no position to blockchain to, you know, yeah. big time leveraging JPMC's position in, in, in now investing into all types of blockchain applicability. So, May I just uh, go to the closure a little bit? So as the Raiffeisen Bank, uh, Kenan also mentioned, we have the Elevator Lab, we have uh, initiatives like that, which, which are supporting this uh, cooperation between banks and, uh, and the fintechs as such. Uh, I believe uh, if I may wrap up a little bit from everything what I heard uh, during the first and second panel discussion, there is a, a regulatory framework which is missing here. There is um, a structural, let's say, a point or issue which needs to be uh, a little bit fixed, like uh, e-signature if we want to have end-to-end uh, -end processes and so on. And uh, this third one would go into the direction of, of the cultural because we are still quite a, a cash economy. So this would, these are my three points I would uh, take with, with me from this panel, panel discussion. I don't know, Emin, if there are any questions uh, in the Q&A session more, but... Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll get to that, but I can't help myself but ask Kenan to please. Uh, reply to everything, especially to Zenan and uh, what, what you Azra just said about Raiffeisen Bank. And uh, I've seen that you have unmuted yourself uh, at one point, and I believe you had something to say. So please, please do. Uh, actually, it's just that uh, uh, yes, we are missing a lot here. But again, uh, uh, we should stay positive and uh, motivating uh, actually uh, uh, by looking at these very successful fintech companies which we have locally. And, uh, and I think that we mentioned some of them uh, and there are a lot of them which we didn't. And uh, this is saying that uh, uh, no matter uh, the challenges we are facing that uh, we can be successful uh, as people, as a country, as a young people, and, uh, uh, but uh, uh, part of this, uh, also we should uh, uh, in parallel uh, work uh, on um, uh, like events like this, where we, where we will discuss the topics. Also, uh, the business community uh, should work actually on important factor, factors in order to build entrepreneur, entrepreneurial uh, culture and make uh, it easier and more attractive. Actually, that's all from my side. Thank you very much, Kenan. Uh, I would like to thank you for interactive uh, panel discussion at one point in time. 
it was really the point, the whole, whole point of organizing the final discussion to have you guys uh, from the industry interact with each other, reply to each other. Uh, that, that was the best part of, of, of the, the final discussion. Also the, the part where Azra uh, jumped in uh, with her industry knowledge and experience and uh, asking you some questions that I probably missed and uh, that uh, have not been raised uh, up until uh, she got them. Uh, that was also uh, very, very amazing and helpful uh, in regards to the uh, panel in general. Uh, I would like to, as we are approaching the end of the final discussion, uh, I would like to uh, please uh, ask you, each and every one of you panelists, uh, in 30 seconds, what would you say is the main message or advice uh, that you would like for uh, the audience to take away? Uh, Kenan, would you please go first? Of course, thank you, Emin. And uh, I'm really, I have to say that I'm happy uh, uh, for being part of this interesting panel uh, and considering that the most of the majority actually of participants are young people. So I will try to send a message to them. Uh, first of all is to take advantage of uh, digital tools in all aspects of life and uh, prepare for the digital economy, which is existing and which will come more in the near future. But the part of digital, actually, for me, it is important to think out of, out of the box, to challenge processes, uh, challenge things, invent. And why not, because we mentioned these uh, successful countries, why not apply their practices and ideas locally? By doing this, uh, uh, you as young people will make this important contribution to the local market and influence all areas of business and life in this country. So young people need to be proactive from one side and supported from us from the business, from the banks and uh, the, the government, the country and everything uh, uh, in order to make these changes. So I would, uh, I would like to say, uh, stay here, please, and lead the change. So thank you. Thank you very much, Kenan. It was especially uh, noticeable that you said, uh, essentially, there's no need to reinvent the wheel. Just take what's already working in Lithuania, Estonia, Sweden, Norway, doesn't matter, and build upon it. But to, to tailor, uh, make it for, for Bosnia and Herzegovina, but don't reinvent the wheel. That, that's, I think, very, very important. Uh, Orhan, would you please go now? Uh, yeah, sure. <clears throat> so what is our main goal? Let's summarize. Our main goal here and, and basically in FinTech is to change the current, uh, the current status in, in BNH. And how do we do it? Uh, our dear colleague Azra mentioned three milestones. Uh, I would say the last one, the people, the customers mm -hmm. are the most important. If mm -hmm. we change their opinion, their mindset, and uh, everything else will change. So if people are asking for FinTech, the laws will change and everything else will change. So uh, what we need to do is educate and you know, uh, try, to, try to bring this technology closer to, 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 to the population. That would be it. Thank you very much, Orhan. Thank you very much for your passionate, uh, passionate presentation tonight. Let, let's put it that Thank way. you. Thank you for having me. I mean, uh, Jenna, would you please uh, say say what what could be your uh, main message for them? To yes. So them? as this was about like mostly fintech, what I would say is. Uh, think a bit not uh, just uh, on the region where you're in. For example, if you are in Bosnia, it doesn't mean that you need to build a fintech for only Bosnia. You can use, for example, SEPA region, European, where you can build fintech and have a product that is basically available for more people, build some investment, stay in Bosnia. You, you can register a company here and then build a product for other countries while waiting for things to change here. And if you become a big player, believe me, things will change because big players are the ones that are actually changing all these laws, etc. So use other countries that they already succeeded. You can even build startups for them in a way. And then when you become a big player, with people from here, then you can change things here. So don't just always con concentrate on Bosnia when you are doing things on region. That is the startup. The startup is not something that it does not scale. If you think about Bosnia, you will stop your scale. That is why Estonia has e-residence because they don't care if it's for their own country. They care the, the company is registered there. So if you register a company here, 
built for whole world and then apply it in Bosnia when you have like uh, resources, funds, etc. So that's what I would want like to people to know that they are not uh, constrained by the country they are living in, especially when technology matters. Even you, you cannot say that technology you are 50 years apart. It can change in one year, basically. It can change in one year. I remember previously someone was come to Bosnia. They were having a phone with camera. Now we have better phones than they have, like, for example, in Germany, etc. So things in technology change fast. You are not, uh, like, basically uh, in Bosnia in terms of you are not uh, constrained by where you live. And just have that in mind. Build globally. Thank you very much, Janan, for your message and also for your, uh, let's say, triggering uh, uh, some answers from, from our, our fellow panelists. Thank you very much for-, for You're welcome. Being. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, please, Daniel, uh, give us your two cents. This was a great conversation. I think what I would advise is, uh, you know, follow the, follow the advice that you have just gotten from the colleague panelists for me. Uh, I would say, you know, remain ethical, remain polite, never take no for an answer and don't be afraid of the failure. That's really concise. Thank you very much, Daniel. Azra, would you please uh, conclude with uh, this with your 30 seconds message? Uh, beside those uh, three, let's say, pillars, as, as Orhan uh, named them, I would say that uh, digitalization calls for, for the transformation. Uh, it calls for the transformation not only of the business models called today fintechs or tomorrow, whatever. It calls for um, transformation of the products, transformation of the processes. It really calls for the transformation of our behavior, uh, our uh, awareness that we have to be agile, we have to be adaptive, we have to learn every day in order to uh, catch up with the, with the future trends and to be ready for the future. Thank you very much, Azra. Especially thanks for your uh, last part of the uh, last segment of this panel discussion, where you raised some really important questions that I have missed. And because you you are coming from the industry, thank you very much for 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 your inputs. Uh, I would like to thank our dear panelists for taking their time and sharing some of their rich knowledge with us tonight. Thanks to everyone in the audience uh, for attending, and we sincerely hope that you have found this panel discussion helpful or useful in one way or the other. And uh, take care, everyone. Have a great rest of the day or night, depending on where you are. And bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Nice bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.